Okay, cool. Wrap up time. 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 Hey y'all, it's Lauren. Happy 4th of July. You're not seeing this on the 4th of July because I'm really behind on all of my editing. It's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. 4th of July is just such a beautiful holiday. I just get to sit around, drink beautiful pink drinks, see explosions and sparkle and glitter in the sky. <sighs> what a day to be alive. Also, red, white, and blue are just like beautiful color scheme. Like whoever thought of that, Betsy Ross, mm, girl, girl, you get it. So I'm taking this day off to finally film my June wrap up, even though it's the 4th of July and you haven't even seen my May wrap up as of the time I'm filming this. So yeah, let's go through what I read in the month of June. The first book I read this month was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I gave this a four out of five stars. It's set in the future where everyone is plugged into this virtual reality and the creator of this created this big, huge like, scavenger hunt video game quest to win his inheritance, which is like a bazillion dollars. So we follow 18 year old Wade Watts who finds the first clue for the game and sparks a whole worldwide phenomenon. The whole quest is 80s themed and I'm familiar with the 80s, but I don't know as many of the references to the video games, movies, pop culture as I could have known before reading this. I wasn't able to make it to his signings, but my friend Kayla's was able to go and she got it signed for me to Laura. May the force be with ya, Ernest Klein. The second book I read this month was Ruined by Amy Tintero, the first in a new trilogy. This follows Emelina who disguises herself as this princess who's going off to marry the prince of her rival kingdom to take revenge on the country who wronged her country of Ruina and the magical people that live there who have different sorts of powers. Emelina herself does not have powers. And she infiltrates this rival kingdom to try and take them down with the help of other kingdoms around them. I gave this book a two star, which was very generous. I kept reading this book because I don't like having DNFs on like my reading report card, I guess. I have things on hold that I've gotten halfway through, decided it wasn't the right time for me to read them and I'll return to them later, but I really don't like having DNFs and I need to start having DNFs. It's 2016. I have read so many different iterations of the romantic fantasy magical being kingdom prince princess books out there like so many if you're gonna do this give me something new don't give me something that feels a lot like other books i've read if this is like kind of your introduction to like a royal fantasy world that's awesome that could be the first book that gets you hooked on this series which is amazing but it's like a more like veteran reader i need things that i haven't really seen before or seen in a certain way. This just was a real letdown. I won't be continuing that series. The third book I read this month was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I'm doing a readathon with Allie from Allie Bobbity Books, RJ from The Secret Sex, and my friend Teresa from Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, The Real Life. Um, not the show. So this follows a young boy, Harry, who has grown up in a very typical British household and then when he becomes 11 finds out that he is a wizard and is getting set off to wizard boarding school. I haven't read this in like five or six years even though this is the one I've read the most out of the entire series. So it just was really great being able to go back and revisit it, finally have a hardcover copy, which I just, I like the feel of hardcovers even though I take the dust jackets off. And I have a lot of fun, weird things where anything that's blue I've made like little marks of things so I do plan to do an in-depth review of this of things you may have missed reading it through the first time not surface level things. The fourth book I read was Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. It's the third book in the Throne of Glass series which is kind of a retelling where Cinderella is an assassin so it follows Selena Sardothian um, as she continues on her quest in life against evil. I guess that's really all I can say. I mean, she's evil sometimes too, but it was actually kind of a quick read, but I'm finding I didn't like this as much as I liked Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. I don't know if the two books that are next to each other kind of like paired off, so I don't know if this is going to be similar to Queen of Shadows, but I'm excited to get into it. That way I'm like completely caught up before Empire of Storms comes out in September. The fifth book I read this month was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling, the second in the Harry Potter series. I've often said that like this is my least favorite of the series, and I don't know if I can pick a least favorite of the series because they're all so unique in different ways, but this is just kind of expounding upon book one. It doesn't really offer too much different than book one, so I feel like if we didn't have book one, I feel like I would like this a lot more, but it wouldn't make very much sense. Uh, there's a lot of stuff foreshadowed in this book. It's just, you're like, what? That was in the year two? Lots of great things. This is the original copy I got in fourth grade. It's all still beat up. It's beautiful. It's the only one I don't have in hardcover. I'm just like, I need a complete matching set because collections. The sixth book I read this month was Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third in the Harry Potter series. I was completely on track until this book and I finished this a few days late 
and now I'm like behind on Goblet of Fire, so I'm gonna like fit the four biggest Harry Potter books into one month because why, why not? Found a lot of stuff in here rereading just like I did the first two, so I will do in-depth book discussions of these, so. And I have a hardcover. I think this is like my favorite combination of all of like the uncovered spines. And I looked at them all out and I laid them and made judicial decisions. And this is my favorite. Harry Potter 7 is my least favorite uncovered book. It just, who did that? The seventh book I read this month was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I won this advanced reader copy at Beef Fest at Barnes & Noble for winning trivia. I got like, I won by one point. It was amazing. This book follows a teenager, Natasha, who is a Jamaican immigrant, and her family who are about to be deported, like, tonight. And a boy, Daniel, who is the first generation son of Korean immigrants and all the pressures that they put about on him, and how all the things that had to happen in the universe and in the world for these two to meet, and how it wasn't inevitable that they would meet, but once they met, falling in love was inevitable. So it's just really beautifully done. It's told in a non-typical style of different points of view, styles, other little interludes about multiverses, about immigration, about hair, about love, about fate, and other secondary characters. And I really enjoyed the way this was told. I like had to pause a few times because I was not prepared for the feelings this book gave me. I gave it a five out of five stars. I loved it so much. I just can't. I love the metaphor of this cover of all the different little pieces of facts and events and things that have to happen in your life and in the universe for it to come together to a more beautiful whole. I could go on and on about this book. I'll do a more in-depth review right before the book comes out. This is coming out November 1st, 2016. And it's just... <sighs> the story it hit me y'all. The eighth book I read this month was Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon because right after I finished The Sun is Also a Star I'm like um I need to read her original book. This book follows Maddie, a teenage girl who has skid severe combined immunodeficiency disease. She gets sick very easily. They have all sorts of filters in her house. There's an airlock to get in. People have to be up on their shots and healthy and have to go through this whole like cleaning process to enter their house. So she really only interacts with her mother who's into her doctor actually, which is not good. You should not diagnose and take care of your family members because Hippocratic Oath, I think. And then her nurse Rosa who comes in and takes care of her during the day when her mom is at work. And everything kind of changes in her life when this boy Ollie moves in next door who is like, emo extreme and they I am back and forth since she's not allowed to leave the house. It follows kind of like what are you willing to risk to live your life. I really enjoyed this book. It was a five star but I do prefer The Sun is Also a Star out of her two books. So if you enjoyed this book I think you'll really really like The Sun is Also a Star. And I love that Nicholas' husband David did all the illustrations for this book. It's just a really wonderful debut book. The ninth book I read this month was The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier, the second in the Wrath and the Dawn duology. I gave this a three stars because I didn't like it as much as I love the Wrath and the Dawn and the novellas. When you have a duology, you have to kind of split the story in half. It just didn't feel balanced. A lot of the romance and the beautiful one-liners that I loved in the Wrath and the Dawn were missing in this, but the Wrath and the Dawn is beautiful. It should have been a standalone. You should just read the Wrath and the Dawn and ignore this. And the final book I read this month was definitely on a whim. I was supposed to finish Queen of Shadows this month, but, you know, life gets in the way. And I picked up Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I read Six of Crows a few months ago and loved it and loved the Grisha verse, but I thought I never wanted to pick up a Grisha book at all because it didn't make sense to me. And then I found I was pleasantly surprised by this also. I really recommend reading Six of Crows first because it's so much more well-developed. I love reading authors like most recent work and then going back to their first work because I'm like, okay, well it gets better. I know that they evolve as a writer. This follows an orphan girl, Alina, who's working in the army against the darkness that's kind of overcome the kingdom, splitting it in half. And there's Grisha. They either can control different elements or they can control creating things or they can control human bodies. So kind of working at a molecular level, not really quite magic. They're kind of more like magical scientists rather than just magical beings. She discovers that she's not just a normal person anymore and gets swept up into the world of the Grisha and the Darkling who is in charge of all of them in kind of this like Russian fantasy world. It's just very beautiful, very rich. There are parts I like but I'm really interested to see how this trilogy plays out and gives us the world that we see in Six of Crows. I'm obsessed with these antlers and the deer necklace. Guys, obsessed. I want one. Thank you so much for watching this wrap up. My name is Laura. This has been Bookies and Cookies. I post videos, I think weekly now. I love each and every one of you and I hope you never forget it. And remember, sparks fly whenever you smile. Thanks, guys. Fourth of July is also a beautiful holiday because a year ago today, Taylor Swift followed me on Tumblr. I'm not emotional. You're emotional. Because she only followed me because I posted this random story on Tumblr a year ago about how my brother met her brother, Austin Swift, behind the scenes at their performing arts center. My brother's in Glee Club, and Taylor Swift's brother was in a play, Dead Men's Cell Phone. And my brother couldn't find his friends. So he was like, hey, Austin. Like, I don't think he said, hey, Austin. He was like, hey, do you see where so and so went? So, like, my brother asked Austin Swift for directions. I'm like, you didn't get me any sort of in with her. Like, 
are you related to me? Are you, do you know, do you know me? So she's hanging out with her brother last year at their 4th of July extravaganza and like a ton of other famous people, but she's taking down most of those Instagram pictures because other certain people we don't talk about are in them. And 4th of July is her favorite holiday and it's my favorite holiday tied with Christmas, my birthday, and St. Patrick's Day, obvi. I have a 4th of July onesie. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Do you want, it's the same one she wore last year. I could show you. Where is it? Where is it? It's in my closet. Hold on. Can we just, with how freaking cute this is, like my favorite item of clothing, like y'all, y'all. I wore this to the Taylor Swift 1989 tour. Oh, it was a problem going to the bathroom. This so I was like, how do I unzip and get out? And it was actually really a lot of fun. It was just like the best. And now we're twins. Hey, Tay. Hey. Is that how you dab? Is it just this? This. Bop, bop, hey. 